This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Okay, good afternoon everyone. Shalom Aleichem. We continue in uh, the Sefer Tomer Devora, And as we've been beginning um, with the importance of the regular study of Musr, um, uh, in our last year before um, Shavuos, I would like to just cite a statement of Rabbi Yisrael Baal Shem Tov, whose yard site is Shavuos. You know, Rav Hutner points out, ironically, the Baal Shem, his yard site is Shavuos, the, the Yom Tif of the giving of the Torah, the Gra, his yard site is on uh, Sukkot, the Yom Tif of Zman Simchaseinu. So some would consider that a bit ironic. But Rabbi Yisrael Baal Shem would say that the Yitzhahara cannot persuade someone not to learn. For a Jew not to learn, that's uh, impossible. But the Yitzhahara persuades a person, don't learn anything that brings to your Shemayim. For example, Sifrei Musr or Shulchan Aruch. Um, don't learn Musr, don't learn Shulchan Aruch. The Yitzhahara persuades a person, learn Gemara all day. Now obviously Gemara is uh, perhaps the the foundation of our learning, the, the, the meat and potatoes. But nevertheless, the Yitzhahara has a very hard time discouraging a person not to learn. But he'll put an extra emphasis, don't learn Musr, don't learn Halacha. Okay, so I want to just speak out and summarize this particular Mida and then make a few Ha'arais. We're learning the sixth Mida, the Mida is Kichavetz Chesed. And the Tamar Dvara says, uh, just to paraphrase, there's a certain a chamber, there's a certain hallway, there's a certain area in, Oilam ha, in, in Shamayim that they have special malachim there and those malachim are appointed to accept and to store away and stow away gemilas chasadim. And when the Midas Hadin is makatrig on Klai Yisrael, when it prosecutes against Klai Yisrael, those angels, they take that chesed and they show at Kaddish Baruch Hu, and Hashem says, oh, oh, I didn't, re-, you know, the, the, that didn't show up, um, that wasn't emphasized in the first round. It sounds like there are sometimes two rounds of din. Hashem will judge a situation based on just the facts, mit, uh, merits and demerits. And even if one of the merits is chesed, but if you have more demerits than merits, you know, the person might be uh, up the creek without a paddle, but there are special malachim. And those malachim take the mitzvah of gemilas chasadim. And they showcase it. And Hashem says, you know what? They're, they're, they do chesed, I'll be merachim on them. Like in the time of the Churban, Hashem told Gavriel, who is, the, who is Midas Hadin, go take the, um, a fistful of coals and throw it on the city. Meaning God gave license to, to uh, Gavriel to be able to execute full Midas Hadin. And everything was going to be destroyed and, up, and Kaisal would have been uprooted at its source. And they were in fact chayiv klaya. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, and the Pasuk says, they saw, it appeared under the Kruvim, the hand of a man. And that indicated that Klai Yisrael is goim al chesed zelazah. And even though we were chayiv, they were, we were saved because we did chesed. Why? Ki chafetz chesed. So this is a very big chiddush of the Tarmah Devaira. The simple pshat of chafetz chesed is, God likes to do chesed to us. God chooses to do chesed to us. The Tarmah Devarah is identifying it as ki chafetz chesed. God likes chesed in others. Not that God does chesed. He likes when others do chesed. And therefore God will sometimes do a second round of judgment. In the first round, using the letter of the law, we don't deserve to be saved. But because God admires chesed so much, He'll do a round two. And in round two, chesed will be much more prominent, even though you have more averos than mitzvahs. And in fact, the Vilna Gaon in his commentary to the Siddur, he says this is what it means in the Shabbos davening. Zuchus umishar lefnei chisai. In round one, God looks at merit and justice, and if we deserve it, we'll be saved, and if we don't deserve it, we won't be saved. However, chesed verachamim lefnei chavaydai. Kindness and mercy are before His throne, meaning in round two, God will say, wait one second, let me look at... Um, Right, Uriel in, in uh, Arizona liked that shot, right? Uriel was smiling. He gave me, all right, we're getting the thumbs up from Arizona. Awesome. Okay, so says the Tamar Devaira. If so, this is the Midah 
with which a person needs to conduct themselves. Which means as follows. Even if you see a bad person and he's hurting you, he's harming you, he's doing evil to you and he's getting you angry, if he has a redeeming quality, not that he does chesed to you, he does chesed to others, so now let's follow in the ways of Hashem. Just like Hashem says, despite the fact that you deserve to be destroyed, I will value this redeeming quality that you do chesed. Likewise, we should see in other people, even if they're rotten and they're obnoxious, but if they do chesed to others, we should have a positive outlook toward them. Secondly, and this is the Chiddush of the day, and we pointed this out yesterday, and we're going to emphasize it today, says the term of the Vayra. And not only if you see other, this person doing chesed to others, but if you see any redeeming quality in him, you should say that redeeming quality is enough that I consider him and I reckon him, he's a, a, a zisayid, he's a good Jew. And especially with your wife. That even if your wife has a few good qualities, that should allow her to be considered in your eyes um, very proper and very upstanding. Even if 99% of her character is Lara, but the fact that she has certain, even very limited good qualities, and I know, I, I'm not referring to anyone here's wife, of course, who have, many, I'm sure, many good qualities, just, you know, for the people who are not listening, it could be, that in their situation, even a minor uh, redeeming quality, should, uh, we should follow in the ways of Hashem. So now, comes our Matthew Solomon, and he asks really a very, very strong question. Where did the Torah Devarah get this from? God doesn't do this. The only thing we see by God is that in round two, God will say, let me look at this person again. Oh, he has in his repertoire chesed? Okay, I'll give him a favorable judgment. But God doesn't do that with other good qualities. All we see is God is chafetz chesed. We don't find, the term of is saying, if you see in your friend, he's an obnoxious guy, but he davens mincha well, or he's a really rotten to the core, but he, he's, he's expert in the mitzvah of visiting the sick. Even if in the other 612 mitzvahs he's rotten, term of says we should have a good outlook of him. That's not what God does. God specifically is chafetz chesed. So we should find, we'll follow in God's footsteps, and we will perhaps give somebody who does kindness a second opportunity. But why is the term of the Torah applying this to any good quality that a person may have? And Rabbi Matasil Solomon says that from here we see there are two steps. Step number one is God loves kindness in someone, and even if they're overall bad, He will consider them good if they do kindness at least. But God cannot do that to every mida that a person has because God is a dayan, He's a judge, and there has to be some fairness. But the fact that He allows Himself to be persuaded by someone's act of kindness means He has the mida to be able to see one thing good despite everything else bad. That obligates us almost to go further than God does. Because we're not Dayanim. And therefore we're allowed to be a little bit more liberal in our view of other people. And therefore we could take God's Midah and say, just like God sees if somebody who has the Midah of Chesed, God hones in on that and He ignores everything else. He could do that. We should do that for any good quality that somebody has. So this is almost mind-boggling where this is obligating us to act beyond the kindness and the... the uh, ways of charity of our Creator. So that's something really worthy of, of thinking about. And with this, Ramat Solomon answers a question that, have pla- that has plagued many, and we'll conclude with this before the Yom Tif of Shavuos. The Gemara says in Shabbos, Hadon Chavera Lekavzcha, someone who judges his friend favorably, they will judge you, Min Hashemayim, favorably. So in other words, let's say uh, you ask somebody, you know, could you do me a favor? Be ready at a certain time. And the guy is, uh, he's, he's late. So judge him favorably. That's something he had extenuating circumstances. Okay. So the question is, I understand I could judge someone favorably because I don't really know what his circumstances are. But God knows exactly what our circumstances are. So how could we say, judge your friend favorably so God will judge us favorably? There's nothing to judge favorably. God knows why we did it wrong. Do we have a good excuse? Do we not have a good excuse? We, 
Meaning, what's the Midah Kenegad Midah? How is it even possible for God to judge someone favorably if He knows all the details? Judging favorably only applies when you don't have all the information. So the Chavetz Chaim in the Shar HaTvuna asked this question, and he says, look, basically, a person could do a mitzvah for a variety of motivations. I could do a mitzvah because I think it's the right thing to do, I want to come close to Hashem, or I could do a mitzvah because I want money or honor. So, if we judge our friend favorably, God will sort of sometimes look the other way when we do a mitzvah, even if our motivation perhaps is lacking. Or says the Chavetz Chaim, a person may have mostly Averois and uh, a few mitzvahs, but if God judges us favorably, he'll, he'll, so to speak, be able to explain away the Averois we've done. We did this Aver under pressure, this Avera we were not feeling well, and he could sort of tilt the scales that way. But says Ramatis Yo Solomon, based on the term of Devairo, we now understand what it could mean that God will judge us favorably. Because we could take somebody, we, we, we see a Jew, he walks into the shul, he doesn't daven properly, he doesn't learn properly, he doesn't do mitzvahs properly, and yet the term of is saying that if he has one good quality, let's say he smiles at people and he says good morning to them, we have a responsibility to strive to say, you know what, he's a good Jew. And then God will say that about us. Why? Because God could do that to us. He could say, He could hone in and say, you know what? Even though this person has 99 demerits and one merit, if that merit is chesed, God could then have a good outlook at us. So it is possible for Hashem to use the attribute of judging people, judging us favorably, but it will only be properly deserved if we apply that to our friend. Okay, Rabbi say obviously all these midos are, uh, are certainly great challenges and what to strive for. So thank you very much for uh, joining together for this year. And Bezos Hashem, we will continue. Uh, tomorrow is Erev Yom Tov. Tomorrow is Thursday, so we're not going to have this year tomorrow at 5. Um, we'll continue Bezos Hashem next Monday. Wishing everyone a good Yom Tov. Chag Kosh V'Sameach. Yom Tov Bye bye. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.